Hi, I'm Desi Eckstein, also known as Drone Diva. Uh, I am an adjunct instructor for TCI Maricosta College. I'm also a UVSI top level three instructor pilot status. I'm an FAA drone pro for San Diego and an ambassador for women and drones. You may have heard that the FAA has Drone Safety Day coming up, which is June, June 18th. And I think it's kind of fun because every day we should be flying safe, but that's a day that we get to do an outreach, share our passion, and just do a little bit extra to encourage others to take that step to flying right. Ha! Huh. Fly right. That is an FAA acronym that I absolutely love. They've taken the letters from right and have incorporated it into what we should be doing as safe pilots. So the right is register, interact, gain knowledge, have a plan, and trust. We're going to dive a little bit into those, but of course it could go a little bit deeper than what we're going to do right here. But I'm just going to briefly go over it a little bit. So the R, register your drone, right? So one of the things that uh, people don't realize is the registration is done through the drone zone and you have the option to register as recreational or commercial being part 107. So if you're flying for fun and your drone is being used for fun, you can register it as the recreational. If you're using it in any capacity, capacity of doing part 107, then you need to have that part 107 registration. Another thing that is often overlooked is they're valid for three years. So if you've been a drone pilot and flying that drone for quite a while, you may want to go back in and check and make sure that it hasn't expired. All right, I interact. Oh, I love interacting, right? Networking, that's what that means. Get out there and network. Of course, I think Women in Drones has one of the best networking places possible with the coffee connection, but that's my personal opinion, of course. So, but networking has such a tremendous value. Get out there, interact with others, and you'll get to see what's out there, what they're doing for learning and doing safety precautions. Uh, there's a lot of other ways that you can get out and do networking and that can be through social media maybe you don't want to go out but you can connect with people on social media um, one of the things that I think is so valuable when we talk about interacting think about that passion that you have think about how you feel when you're flying and what got you into flying to begin with share that passion that's such key to continuing with the aviation industry, not just drones, but we need aviators, aviators as a whole. So if you have an opportunity to maybe share that passion and that thrill and excitement that you have towards youth, I encourage you to get out there and share, share that passion that you have, build a better future for aviation as a whole, and of course, a drone community. <laughs> all right so g gain knowledge oh we're always gaining knowledge right aviation is no different so you want to learn not only you want to take the time to learn about your own aircraft but of course you want to learn about the regulation rules and the environment you're flying in what are some pre-flight planning steps that you should do uh, there's a lot of different tips and tricks that are available for gaining knowledge of course networking is a really good way to do that right but you want to learn what apps are available there's so many great apps that we can use as drone pilots that are very useful to making us say have safe flights right? Uh, learning the airspace. Uh, my key, I always say, is always go to the source. The FAA has the FAA facility map, and it's also known a couple under other names like um, uh, Visualize It, uh, ArcGIS, a couple others. But if you go right there, right when you're first starting out, you will have a really good idea whether you need to get a Lance authorization 
or if you're going to have to go through the drone zone, or maybe you're in class G airspace. So learning your airspace is so vital. So try to gain knowledge in all the different ways, utilizing the tools that are available to us as drone operators. So the next one is H, have a plan. Ah, planning is so, so important. You want to think about your mission planning as a whole. You want to think about the steps that you're taking as far as the flights that you're going to do. How do you prepare for your flights? How do you pack all your equipment so that when you get out to the site that you're going to be flying at, that you're prepared? So having a plan is so important. Um, take it even a step further than that. You want to think about emergency planning. What if you have a situation? What are you going to do? Be prepared for this. So have a plan. A couple little scenarios are uh, what, it, what is the setting on your drone uh, telemetry? That what is the setting if your drone actually has a lost uh, connection? Is it going to hover or is it going to return to home? Here's a really great one that people don't even think about quite often is have a scenario of how much battery life do you have? So if your drone can fly 40 miles an hour, you have 30 minutes of battery life, full fresh battery. Okay, some drones don't fly that long, but some do. If you can fly, and I did this for easy math, uh, if you can fly 40 miles an hour, you have 30 minutes of uh, flight time on that battery. Where could you be? That gives you a 20 mile radius. Have you actually looked on Google Maps or wherever at a 20 mile radius of if you had a flyaway where that drone could actually go? Part of your planning is an emergency plan as well. All right, so we're on to the last ones. That's T, trust and train. So yes, if you're flying for fun, you must trust. So the uh, FAA has a trust exam for recreational flyers. Cool thing, it's free, it's online, and it's just gonna give you some basic knowledge of aviation and the airspace and in your surroundings of where you're flying. There's several administrators uh, for the exam. And so you can go onto the FAA website and find a, a administrator that you would prefer. And then also training. Oh, let me back up one second. On that exam, when you get ready and you've completed it, you do have to have a 100% to complete it. But when you're done, you'll print it out and you want to make sure that you save a copy of that. Save it and print it because if you're ever asked by a law enforcement officer or someone, you'll have to provide that. So make sure you have a copy with you. Uh, training. A lot of ways you can get training. You can do it online. There's a lot of training resources online, but in, in person, on hands, of course, Women in Drones, we offer several different uh, training programs that come up throughout the year. Um, but there's a lot of ways that you can get training. And there's also ways that you can just take your basic flight skills and develop that confidence and muscle memory that you need for just doing safe flights. And that can be just done on your own. So get some training, reach out to others, find a way to um, elevate your standards, right? So summarizing all this, like I said, I love the FAA acronym that they have developed, Fly Right. It's a really basic, getting started and there's ways you can dive deeper into it and we'd love to be available if you have any questions but i suggest you just kind of start there start looking into it and don't forget go out have fun but fly safe <laughs>